I've seen a couple of questions coming okay. through about developing chronic urticaria after vaccination. I think there are a couple of things I wanted to say there. The one okay. uh, comment was, is this common? Or somebody was told to them that it's common. So I think my data that I shared really shows that acute urticaria does happen after vaccine, but the vast majority of that is self-limiting, can treat it with a, a few days of antihistamine or a short course of steroids, and it will get better. I think chronic urticaria after COVID-19 vaccine is incredibly rare. Uh, you know, it's still in the region. Again, given the fact we've now 11 billion doses of vaccine and all that we are seeing, and, and I mean, there we're a network. I mean, just to stress, we are a network that entire focus of our day-to-day -day jobs are urticaria care. Um, and still, it's, it's in the region of a case series or a few case reports. Um, and so I think it is uncommon. I think there are people on this, uh, you know, patients uh, uh, reporting here on this forum that they have developed chronic urticaria. And, and that's true. There are definitely patients that develop chronic urticaria for the first time. I don't think we understand exactly why that is, but probably this, you know, the slide that you shared, Emek, of the immune factors that related to developing chronic urticaria in the context of a viral infection, those same uh, innate and adaptive immune uh, factors are probably at play in triggering some people really to develop chronic urticaria. I think most of uh, the other question people asked about that was, was um, uh, treatment. So I think in most instances, we would follow the guideline directed treatment. Uh, and many of the patients, so I've got a, when I say many, I've got a cohort of seven. Most of those patients have responded uh, to updosing of their antihistamine uh, and some to uh, anti IgE therapy or to cyclosporin. Um, I think that the data overall, there was another question about how long this will last. I think that there's very little data on that yet to guide any kind of comments about whether or not this will be continued or hope, hope that it will resolve. So normally, what again, what we would do at local practice in South Africa is if we did put somebody on anti-IGE therapy, we might put people on for six months and then slowly start to increase their dosing interval with the hope that they would go into remission spontaneously. And we see this in chronic urticaria too. And hopefully that would also happen with uh, chronic urticaria that was triggered by COVID-19 vaccine. And then I guess the last question, which I did answer in the chat a little bit, but maybe is worth clarifying, is somebody saying that, you know, they developed it after two or three boosters and now they, you know, what to do next? Like, should they have another booster? I think that's quite a complicated question because it also relies on the different data coming out about vaccine effectiveness and also immunogenicity. So there is some data coming out now that protection from severe disease, COVID, is probably many of the vaccines after you've had like uh, three boosters of RNA and you've got an immunocompetent immune system, probably that will protect you long term from severe COVID disease, less so against infection. So you will have to weigh up the risk benefit mm. of whether or not you wanted to up your medicine for your chronic urticaria and then take your booster to protect you against infection uh, or whether you would want to, to not take the risk. But again, the, the trade-off with that is that you might get a, another COVID infection even with a vaccine, and that might also provide the immunological stimulus to worsen your urticaria. So it's not a very clear answer, and I would recommend that to be discussed with your individual practitioner based on your individual factors. I don't know if anyone else wants to add. Emek, you, you were nodding. Yes. Uh, mind you want to add? Yes, the, that's a very important point, Johnny. Thanks for touching this. And uh, I believe uh, COVID-19 infection also leads to chronic urticaria. So do you want to get it from the infection or do you want to get it from the vaccination? I believe that uh, it gets more chronic when it's due to uh, the infection. But now, you know, we don't have the data, but we will have uh, the data, uh, I believe, in, in a few months because we are starting a study on this. So we will see if uh, the vaccine people have more chronic urticaria or it, is it just acute urticaria? Does it get more chronic or is it more resistant to treatments? We will have answers to these questions thanks to the UK community, you know, 
We are doing many nice projects together, say, yes. uh, collecting many data together, and then we will have answers to all these questions. And I think the one other comment to just make as well, I don't know if Iman wants to say, but relates to the uh, feeling that people are having that they are suddenly seeing so much more of it. Um, and I think that one of the things you have to be careful is about numbers. And that's why I try to put up the numbers at the beginning of my talk is because when you are vaccinating in your own country, 33 million people in the case in, in, in a short space of time over six months, then even a rare side effect occurring in one in every 2,000 people will feel like a lot of total cases, which I think a lot of doctors have experienced. They, there will be a lot of cases. We saw this early on with the vaccine rollout with anaphylaxis. We were suddenly very worried because everybody was seeing a case of anaphylaxis. But when the data came out, when we looked at the actual numbers, we saw that the rate was slightly increased, but it wasn't remarkable remarkably increased. And I think one has to be very careful about that because one has to always remind oneself of the denominator, you know, the, the number that we're dividing about. And we are giving not only like same with COVID, we had an unprecedented amount of the same infectious illness in a short space of time. And that meant that even rare manifestations of the infection actually were quite, quite frequent. We saw quite a lot of it. Um, but the actual, uh, how common it was, was often extremely, you know, it was extremely uncommon as a side effect, but the total number of cases were quite high. Yes. Yeah, Very I wanted to add to this actually is uh, during the COVID pandemic, at, at the beginning of the COVID pandemic, I was surprised that I had uh, so many more cases of urticaria than before. And I reached out to many of the UK care uh, physicians there and I just asked is this the same in your country I was really overwhelmed the clinic was overwhelmed with new cases that have not been vaccinated it was just at the beginning of the COVID pandemic and I think that those patient, patients were actually stressed and then I got another um, wave of uh, urticaria flares from patients who came worried about the vaccination about allergic reactions and I feel that really stress and anxiety plays a significant role. So yes. uh, oh, I was my quite... question to everybody. Is it the stress a factor which is linking to COVID exacerbation in the patient with urticaria? What do you think? Because we were all with a lot of stress during this period. Yes, of Amec? course. Yes, yes okay. of course, it's, it's one of the exacerbating factors we, we know uh, for a long time, we have experience with this. Uh, chronic urticaria starting after a, a serious psychological trauma or chronic urticaria uh, and stress together uh, and stress leading exacerbations of urticaria. We commonly observe these things in our patients and of course, that's that's an important point. I, I I believe it has a role too. Thank you once again, and um, I will close the webinar. So, bye to everybody, and thank, thank you very you. much. Bye okay. bye.